Okay, should we get started? We've got quite a big story to tell here. Um, this is a, just to check you're in the right room, it's uh, the Visit Britain Digital Customer Experience Programme that we're talking about. Um, so, hello. <laughs> Can everyone hear me now? Uh, so we're here today to talk about uh, a little bit of an introduction as to what the program was all about, uh, a bit of a consideration as to why Drupal was uh, considered to be a suitable platform for this program of work with Visit Britain. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about the approach that we took uh, in such a large project with uh, multiple websites and a huge amount of complexity, a lot of stakeholders and then a very uh, big global audience, a very diverse audience. Uh, how we went about discovering uh, what should be done uh, from a technical perspective, but also how to meet the user's needs. And then we want to focus really on the, the key changes that we imparted as part of this program of work. And then uh, Marie will give a, a conclusion as to what impact it's had for their organisation. So I'd like you to meet Marie. Hi, I'm Marie Orpin and I'm the Head of Digital at Visit Britain. And uh, some of you might know me, I'm Paul Johnson. Uh, I'm the Drupal Director at CTI Digital, uh, an agency in Manchester in England. So um, Visit Britain and Visit England are brand names of the British Tourist Authority. And we are a non-departmental body um, funded by the UK government. And the purpose of the organisation um, is to drive a thriving tourism industry, creating economic prosperity across Britain. And we do that by encouraging overseas visitors to visit Britain, inspiring people who live in Great Britain to take their holidays there, promoting the provision and improvement of tourist amenities and facilities in Great Britain and advising ministers and public bodies on tourism matters. And uh, we're CTI Digital, uh, so we're uh, one of the largest Drupal agencies in the UK. Uh, we have, uh, beyond Drupal, we have uh, 200 other staff who specialise in strategy, user experience design, uh, content strategy, uh, through to performance marketing and conversion rate optimization. Uh, all the way through to we've got a big photographic studio and video studio in, in, the, in our offices in Manchester. So uh, we, yeah, we truly are a, a full service agency. And, and we work across, uh, we in Drupal, we work with a, a, a wide range of different clients. Uh, from higher education such as um, Manchester Metropolitan University uh, through to uh, uh, cultural sector with uh, London Transport Museum, uh, all the way through to uh, private sector um, with organisations like BSF uh, and the NHS. So uh, we uh, use Drupal in, in many different ways. So back in 2021, um, Visit Britain realised that in an ever more digital world, the way that people search for and consume information is constantly changing. And as part of our strategy to grow Britain's visitor economy, we wanted to ensure that we were reaching the right people at, in the right way and at the right time. And of course, that meant digital. And just like many other well-established organisations, by that time, 2021, Visit Britain had a really fragmented digital estate. It had multiple websites on different platforms. We had Sitecore, Drupal 7, Drupal 8 and WordPress, multiple agencies. And these digital properties were being managed by many different teams within the organisation. So, of course, there were different way, ways of working, which was inefficient. It wasn't possible for investments to be shared. Um, and over time, the websites content had become really quite bloated and information was duplicated in some cases across sites. So what that meant for the user was a fragmented, confusing and sometimes broken journey. Um, so we were not giving the users the experience that they wanted and expected. And also our web state didn't support the organization's ambitions around digital first. So recognizing that significant change was needed, we started the Digital Customer Experience Program. And the vision for that was to deliver a new forward-looking digital ecosystem supported by the implementation of a single scalable global content management system and digital asset management system, as well as associated new processes and ways of working. 
So that was the vision. And to bring that vision to life, getting the user experience and the technology right were obviously critical. But we knew that people and processes are just as important. And we didn't want to have an in-house team facing off to an agency team. We wanted one team all working together with shared goals and the same passion and ambition to deliver. And like any team, we needed to have clear roles and responsibilities. So we centralised the digital team at Visit Britain and established our role as facilitators, advocates and guardians of the new digital estate and ways of working. So in my team, we provide the systems, support, tools, training and documentation for our digital estate. We advocate for digital best practice and the benefits that brings to teams and the whole organisation and industry. And we're the guardians of Visit Britain's digital standards, ensuring the cohesion of the estate as a whole. Uh, and as Marie said, uh, we've worked in an embedded way. Uh, it was really important. Uh, they were looking towards us to provide uh, the strategic direction for this project, uh, which involved the potential retirement of a number of sites. It had impact uh, around ways of working uh, internally at uh, Visit Britain, and, and therefore may have affected people's ro roles and their jobs. Uh, and we also engaged uh, with Visit Britain together, hand in hand, to uh, produce, um, uh, to undertake a, an extensive uh, phase of uh, user research to understand what the audiences were and what they thought the purpose of Visit Britain was fundamentally, as well as the websites themselves. Uh, and ultimately, uh, from this user research and also uh, researching the ways of working internally within the organisation, uh, we started to form a, a, a solution architecture that met the user needs and also the organisational needs. And then ultimately, uh, planning a, a technical solution that could uh, be developed and, and rolled out in a sustainable and consistent way. Uh, so a huge amount of work was done in that regard. So at the time of the public procurement for this project, uh, the, the Visit Britain did not uh, dictate that Drupal would be the platform that necessarily uh, would be the, uh, part of the solution. And uh, CTI Digital does deliver across multiple CMSs. So uh, even at that point, we weren't necessarily uh, thinking that Drupal was going to be absolutely the, the tool to use. But uh, the Based on the requirements that were discovered, um, Drupal was well justified. So Visit Britain operates in a highly regulated environment. Uh, they have uh, a, a very committed to security, GDPR, accessibility compliance, and particularly content governance. Uh, so uh, every website has uh, workflows to uh, go through editorial approval. Uh, but over that, um, ensuring that media has all the necessary, uh, necessary licensing and permissions uh, it's really, really vitally important that a Visit Britain shows leadership there. And these will lean towards Drupal's strengths. And they needed to roll out multiple websites uh, from a common code base. Uh, they wanted one CMS to rule them all. Um, and it was also serving a global audience, so translation was a very important factor here. Uh, but not only translated, but it needs to be localised uh, for, for the, uh, so based on the user research, of, um, different territories are, uh, find different facets of, visit of Britain uh, appealing to them. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we responded to that. And also drawing from the e-commerce functionality within Drupal, uh, we wanted to, uh, the visit written shop needed to be delivered, but there was already an existing uh, integration to Magento, to TXGB, which is the ERP system that Visit Britain have generated to link through to theatres, to, um, uh, to the um, to underground ticketing systems, uh, multiple different providers and highly complex. So what we ended up doing was we built a bridge between Drupal and Magento. So when you visit the website, uh, you are interacting with uh, Drupal, but uh, via APIs, uh, we're actually having Magento as the commerce engine. Um, so that was uh, important to not introduce a wider scope of complexity. Um, and few CMSs can meet these demands. Uh, so, yeah, as I said, whilst we uh, use, use multiple CMSs, Drupal was the clear winner. So 
So one of the things that we found really beneficial with our programme was that we took the time up, up front to make the right strategic decisions and really think them through. Um, because, of course, those decisions that you make right up front ladder down through the programme. You don't want to be there six months in, wasting time while you're discussing something that actually could have been agreed a long time ago. So, for example, that took us to one of our key principles, which was that we would not repeat what others do well. So, um, you know, as the UK... Uh, tourist board, we're not in competition with the tourist industry in the UK. So, you know, the principle made sense strategically, but what would it mean in practical terms? Well, what it meant was rather than providing content on UK attractions, we would talk about the UK and we would talk about particular locations, but then we would allow the attractions themselves to talk about themselves because obviously they're going to do a better job of that than us. Um, which again, strategically is a really sensible approach, but the concern was what would that do to our search rankings? Um, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So other strategic decisions we made were around reuse and efficiency. Um, we were restrained in terms of you know, resource and budget, as I'm sure most clients are. Um, so we wanted to reuse our components and our content as much as possible to get the best value from them. And we also wanted to offer a vast library of visual assets, which is critical both to us in Selling Britain, but also for all of our partners who are also Selling Britain um, around the world, and also for journalists, because PR is a huge part of the organisation. So um, that led us to the decision that we needed to have a digital asset management system. Um, so those decisions which determined what we would do and how we'd do it all had to be properly evaluated, understood and most importantly probably communicated throughout the organisation. So this uh, programme of work spanned uh, four years. So we're in year three at the moment and it had multiple phases and involved different stakeholders throughout and also different disciplines uh, from our agency as time passed. And so we felt it was really important at the start to have a, a model um, that could introduce continuity throughout the project so we didn't lose our way. And as people were brought onto the project, uh, they had this guide to um, like a, a North Star to be able to, um, for them to understand what the, 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 like, like the grounding principles of this project were. And having these robust guidelines were invaluable. And in setting our digital standard, we took our inspiration from the government digital service, which of course made sense because Visit Britain is a publicly funded organisation, but also because the GDS has developed such an incredible range of really transformative products that are used by 13 million people a week. So they kind of know a thing about digital. Um, there are some differences, of course, between the GDS and Visit Britain. So for example, most of what the GDS does is, is transactional services. Um, it's a much more mature organisation digitally than, than we are with far greater scope and resources. So whilst we took in inspiration from what they do, um, we needed to adapt their standards to work for us. And so these are the 11 standards that uh, we abide by in this project. Uh, they were developed uh, in collaboration with colleagues at CTI Digital and also Visit Britain, um, you know, multiple participants, so that everyone was really bought into uh, what we were charting out to do. Um, and whilst uh, you might um, uh, align to some of these standards. I would, if you were going to do this, I would recommend that you uh, work inside your teams to develop your own, but maybe use these as an inspiration. So we developed guidelines and processes that were shared amongst the team and the wider organisation, and they really were the practical embodiment of those principles. So they included documentation, tools, systems, training and support. So we wrote documentation that captured those core principles and ways of working. We embraced resources and patterns that enabled reuse. We defined and shared <coughs> excuse me, technical components. We upskilled the team and, very importantly, the wider organisation, and we created standardised ways of working. Yeah, because there's no point in having these principles if people don't know they exist. Um, so, with 12 sites uh, across the estate serving a really broad range of different audiences and having different purposes in global locations, the challenge at the start was the scale of, of the, the task at hand we had to uh, conduct a discovery 
um, that give us enough research to be able to proceed uh, whilst um, yeah, there was a desire to get these new sites released, but uh, there was a risk that we would leave things undiscovered that we will um, wish we'd have found out earlier. Uh, yeah, we we need to make, needed to make sure that we'd found out enough so that uh, the decisions we were making early weren't going to impact what was happening later. Uh, and each uh, was intrinsically linked to business workflows. Uh, so there was risk that uh, if we missed something out, it would uh, hamper Visit Britain's business capabilities. So what we did was we broke out the work into an initial a statewide discovery. So we focused on identifying the commonalities, uh, reviewing all the sites at a high level, uh, but sufficiently deep that uh, you know, we felt that we understood the sites and the, what, it, uh, what its purpose was in terms of for Visit Britain and all the, also the audiences. And we engage with stakeholders uh, and, and the user audiences across all sites at a, a, a fairly a high level. And then for each site, as we approached them, uh, we had specific discoveries for those sites, but we were building on top of the functionalities and, uh, that we discovered and built for the, the, the common estate. And of course, a huge part of discovery is engaging with stakeholders. And at Visit Britain, there are a lot of stakeholders because the websites are absolutely business critical. They form, um, for a lot of teams, that is the, the, the core focus of, of their work. So it was really important to understand what those websites meant to people, what were the pain points, what would be essential for us to keep, and what were people's future ambitions. And with so many people involved, that was a really complex process. So we needed a consistent approach to gather all of the information in a limited timescale. And we actually took uh, inspiration from Drupal paragraphs here. Um, so we built this modular framework um, to be able to use similar questions uh, across multiple stakeholders. Um, so we identified the areas and topics uh, we developed questions around those um, and then we were able to map those to different stakeholders so uh, they were personalized to that specific stakeholder but what it did was allowed us to ask the questions in such a way there was consistency across time which allowed us to an analyze them in a more meaningful way. And to understand how the estate served users of the various websites and therefore how it might need to change we undertook a detailed analytical review. And as a joint team, we came to the conclusion that the most important thing is that the right audiences can find the, the websites and the right information on the websites at their time of need. And also that when, it, when they get there, it's easy to use. So what really matters is SEO and user experience. And that was quite liberating for us as a, a joint team. Uh, they were basically agreeing that um, it, all the sites that existed presently, um, that might not necessarily be what we were to develop in the future. Um, so I'm just going to highlight a few of the uh, techniques that we used uh, during this discovery. Um, uh, uh, most people are probably familiar with tree testing, but uh, what we did here was, and as illustrated in this diagram, that the, these nodes are actually, uh, we did an estate-wide tree test. So uh, we gave people tasks, and at the top of the tree was the white websites themselves. So we were looking to try and discover whether or not people were going to the right website in the first place. And as you can see, in certain situations, they went down the wrong path. So uh, what people thought the website was for uh, wasn't actually what it was actually doing. So this was a really, really uh, valuable foundational work about informing us uh, what did end users really think the websites were for? Uh, we also used analytics and data uh, to model uh, the estate. So this diagram here, uh, each node is a website and the lines are the traffic between the websites. So oftentimes people will be going to multiple websites to find the information they wanted is what is indicating. And the proximity is the strength of the linkages, the amount of traffic that's passing between these sites, and therefore the similarity of the websites, which we interpret as being that there was a potential to maybe merge these websites, uh, and even you know, these two here, maybe bring them together to have a more simple and harmonized estate. So because the web, the web estate um, was made up 
of so many sites, um, all of which had crossover between segments and user needs, we wanted to first understand what people actually clicked on before then delving a couple of levels deep to really understand that's how the information architecture was working. So we already had some surveys in place which we augmented um, to understand who those different segments were, what the top tasks on each site were, whether users achieved their goals, whether their expectations were met, and we wanted to understand ideas for improvement and also which competitors they used and you know what they thought of that, any recommendations. And we had about 2,000 responses, which was statistically um, significant. So we began to move towards um, user experience designs and also uh, proposing different approaches to the information architecture as the navigational structure of the sites. And you know, with the best will in the world, uh, we didn't actually know which was the, the best approach. And uh, we, um, we believe that the best people to answer that question is the actual users. Uh, so we use preference testing. So here's an example where we had three different options and we literally asked the user to express a preference as to which one they had an affinity with more or less. Uh, and you know, the multiple navigation trees uh, we had design concepts which we, we asked multiple questions about to uh, get a, a sense uh, of, of their opinion and obviously a large number of people went through this and it gave us a lot of confidence that uh, we could uh, move forward uh, with a specific, uh, the, the, you know, which, which approach was the winner. And with over 15,000 content items across the estate, uh, it wasn't practical for us, our content strategists, to actually go and look at every single item. Uh, so we use content sampling, which is where uh, we uh, dip into each website and uh, take a representative sample of the content within that site. And then we were assessing it against different criteria. Um, so we were looking at uh, w what was that content, what audience was that trying to treat, uh, what was the purpose of the content, and therefore, to come, um, together, the, the purpose of the website, what topics did it cover? Um, and also, uh, from a qualitative perspective, uh, making any um, observations about the type of content and um, you know, things like the reading level and um, whether or not it was suited to the, the personas that it was meant to be treating. Um, so we did this across all sites and uh, we used um, uh, uh, spreadsheets to try and map similarities or to identify similarities, which also led us to further inform the way we might be able to merge sites together. And something that was a real revelation, uh, which we came to using um, just Google Analytics, was we identified that 93% of quality visits to our website were spent engaging with just 25% of our content. Uh, another approach that we took was to um, look at the, um, the, the, the websites and then uh, we, we began to understand uh, what the audiences were. And we, uh, again, we, we saw similarities which allowed us to, to model uh, to a dramatically uh, fewer number of sites. Uh, in parallel, um, to contribute to the content governance uh, side of things, um, we uh, undertook a digital asset management discovery. So Visit Britain has a long heritage of uh, um, commissioning and curating large amounts of images about the country so that it can project uh, a really impressive um, visual uh, narrative about the, the, the country. But uh, the as is operating model was quite inefficient. It took a long, long time. It might take three or four months to actually get the permission to use an image and to get the licensing signed off. Um, and uh, it also uh, relied on external suppliers to be able to provide this capacity. So uh, in many respects, Visit Britain were um, impeded by the as-is model. Uh, we looked at the technology, also the um, servicing layer, and also the internal human resources. Uh, we interviewed uh, staff to see how they use um, systems to do this and then we've discovered that a lot of it was done in Excel or using um, Google Cloud uh, rather than uh, any kind of rigorous process that was um, consistent between staff. And we also conducted market research once we'd um, elicited requirements from stakeholders as to uh, the need uh, enabling them to do their jobs. 
uh, and we did a shortlisting exercise where we scored uh, the market um, proposition and uh, advised the zip written uh, in their dam procurement. So they went out to public tender, uh, which resulted in a, um, a supplier being selected. Um, and uh, we, uh, as developers, produced a proof of concept to uh, evidence that this new dam could actually integrate into Drupal in a multi-site environment. Um, and they have a really powerful capability now to uh, revoke permission for the use of an asset. So they can flag an asset in the dam and that propagates across the whole estate. And if it uh, needs to be removed immediately, uh, that, that can happen and image, an image is replaced. So it's, it gracefully removes the image. Um, but there are also reports in place that warn people that there is upcoming uh, expiry of an image that they're using. So those findings led us to make some key transformational changes. So firstly, we implemented simple user-centered navigation grounded in customer data. So users can filter using the headings, destinations, things to do and plan your trip. It's really simple. And these are the things that people told us in the research are important to them and that they understand. One fundamental change, um, which was triggered by a finding in our initial research, was that we sort of had this assumption that visitors to Britain and even British people themselves understand British geography. And actually that's not true. People need to have more help. Um, they don't always know where a specific decision at the destination is and they don't want to be limited by geography when browsing. So our research helped us to identify a simple categorization that matched the user's mental models, which is city, countryside and coast. And that was just one of the many changes driven by our initial discovery work. So another element that we introduced was um, a storybook design system. So we are responsible for maintaining multiple websites that have different look and feels, but there's an overarching storybook which has all of the components uh, within um, to build a website. But because Visit Britain has multiple brands, so Visit England, Visit Britain, uh, and then there are different audiences as well, so trade and media, uh, they all have slightly nuanced uh, looks and uh, Storybook is a really fabulous platform to be able to um, get the visual look and feel up before we start development um, so that the client can um, cascade that around the organisation to get sign off. Uh, but it also means that it is a, um, a capability of using it in other platforms as well. So uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we have to use Drupal for everything. And it's also extensible, so in the future we can add new components as well. So we realised that the solution to a lot of the issues that we had up front, um, multiple websites, multiple agencies, different ways of working, wastage, um, resulting in a poor customer experience and additional cost, was actually having one CMS. Um, and having one CMS gives us the capability to build once and then roll out as many times as we want, which is just unbelievable really you know after 20 years of being in digital to have that capability is actually incredible as a marketeer um, and that has enabled us to have one way of working one agency and one set of infrastructure costs so really just having that one CMS was the embodiment of one of those principles that we had at the beginning yeah. so focusing the resources on similarities before differences was uh, you know the, the key principle here um, we look to try and find as many commonalities so that we're building as few things on each discrete site as possible. So it encapsulated all the front end, um, all the content types that are common across the site, uh, the branding, uh, any things like GDPR and SEO functionality, all of the good things that Drupal is great at, what a good site needs to have is all in this initial capability platform. And so what we have now is uh, the ability to be able to uh, install a site um, and even you know, within minutes we've got a, a fully working um, Visit Britain Drupal website with specific capabilities that they have and we built it off the back of the heritage of our agency uh, platform built on Drupal called Voyager 
Uh, so that had already gone through multiple rounds of accessibility testing, penetration testing, uh, usability testing. So uh, yeah, it was bringing forward all of that heritage, but we made a specific solution for Visit Britain uh, that met the needs of, of their organization. So the idea is that uh, we've got Drupal Core, then we have the core features of the uh, ICP, uh, so uh, yeah, everything a good website needs, but then you have these, the feature library, so things like the DAM integration and maybe some sites have a blog and some have events. And we've got these um, ingredients to make sites, um, you know, recipes basically. Uh, so uh, the consumer and industry site have different capabilities uh, and requirements. So, uh, and it means that we can make an enhancement in any one of these features and then we can roll it out to multiple sites as well. So it's uh, reducing the long-term cost of ownership. Of course, all of these things are developed uh, to the Drupal standards. So. Um, it's open to other agencies contributing to the platform or inheriting in the future. Um, and also it means that um, we can contribute back uh, to Drupal um, any patches or any enhancements that we've made and specifically around the multilingual um, features. We've uh, found some bugs in core, which uh, we've, we've pushed back um, to, 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 to Drupal.org. And there's a, a, a grounding principle of any state funded um, um, project is that uh, we should be working out in the open and also uh, contributing to open source where possible. So one of the things that we've done is um, we've created lots of um, paragraph layout components. So I'm sure a lot of people in the room will know about paragraphs. Um, we just want to point out a few of the, the ones that we, we, we're quite proud of. Um, so this is um, the filterable listing. So it's based on solar in the back end. Um, well, what it's capable of doing is, is presenting multiple types of content and also we can control uh, the filters that we've got here. There's one, one filter here which is national, um, but here this is an events calendar on Visit Britain Industry which we launched on Monday and it has um, two filters that are specific to uh, the, um, the needs of an events calendar. And in the back end, um, we've, we've got a simplified version of views really. Um, most content editors can't use views, it's too complicated. Um, so what we've done is we've given the ability to um, target different markets, there's different display modes, so that's where you get the, the calendar and the, um, the other listing that was on the left. And then you can, this is basically identifying taxonomy terms, so we can um, do different categorization, and then we can say which type of content do we want to present. Um, so, and also you can order by different criteria as well. Uh, and that could be customized as well, so um, really, really you know, powerful for a content editor to be able to do that without the need of a developer. And the mapper listing is quite powerful as well, but it also responds to the, uh, m the, mind, the mental model of the user. As Marie said, most people don't know where places are in England, and if you're coming from China, um, you might not know that the Lake District is a really long way from Bath. Um, so as I interact here, um, I click on the list, it's telling me where Bath is, and then I'm going up to the Lake District, clicking on that, and it's telling me where it is. It's a simple thing, but um, uh, really, really valuable to someone who's planning a trip, and it needs to be a feasible trip. And also, uh, we've created stubs. So some of these entities are within the website, they're content types, but the stubs are just very, very small content types, which are linked out to an external provider. So we don't have to put all of the, uh, the detail in, and it just links straight out, and that's sort of the leans towards uh, Marie saying that they're not necessarily the best source of information for any particular topic. Um, so technically we're responding to that, that need as well. So obviously the whole organisation is trying to maximise the volume and value of tourism to Britain. So a simple way of doing that is to encourage people to stay longer when they're in Britain and experience more of it. So the whole website is focused on inspiring and informing visitors. So these components are just perfect because they enable us to choose something, you know, exciting thing to do in <coughs> Wales in the autumn. Um, beautiful photography from the dam. Um, really, really sells the experience. So here we are in the Midlands, experiencing the life of a Peaky Blinder, um, or visiting one of our featured cities. So this is incredibly powerful in terms of marketing and in terms of influencing customers. And these components that CTI has created for us enable us to be creative and 
to use our rich visual assets to their best effect, to really sell Britain as a tourist destination and showcase the experiences that Britain offers, highlighting our cultural hot, hot spots and helping, to, helping businesses to plan their trip. And it's also about helping people to understand that Britain is not just a seasonal um, vacation, it's actually an all year round place to visit. And here's um, the industry site which was launched on, on Monday. Um, you can see that there are some commonalities between the sites, um, but they're um, completely different purposes. So they're using different components in different combinations and it's got different branding on it as well. So moving on to the content and governance, which was really holding Visit Britain back in the past. Uh, we've translated the sites into six languages and it's now localized. Um, so you'll see on the left, we've got um, the, um, that's the Spanish, <laughs> no, it's the French, and we've also got the Italian, and you'll notice that we're, we're highlighting different um, destinations to go to because the user research has told us that that is the most likely things that a, a, a visitor from those countries is going to, um, to, to it will appeal to them. Um, and in the back end, the translation management is using, obviously, uh, the multilingual features that um, Drupal is, uh, is famously good at. Okay. So, two years ago, there was a huge amount of content on the Visit Britain website. We didn't have the resources to optimise it all. Um, and I spoke earlier about one of our strategic decisions, which was not to repeat what others are doing well. So also take into account that analytics finding about 93% of quality visits to our website spent engaging with just 25% of our content. So that led us to the decision to retire 90% of our content, which as a marketeer is an incredibly brave decision. Um, and we knew that there was likely to be an overall reduction in traffic from doing that. But actually, despite retiring so much content, we only saw a 34% reduction in traffic overall in the first month. And looking at September's figures for the global English site, which is the first one we launched in December, um, although there has been a reduction in overall traffic, quality visitors, which are the ones we care about, have increased enormously from 528,000 per month to 746,000. And to further bolster the um, reduction in the content uh, across the site, and there were many, many examples where mm, uh, a topic had been covered multiple times. Um, so what we did was um, we agreed that uh, there would be one canonical source uh, that could be shared to different places, surfaced in different places on the estate. Um, so the consumer site is the one that is the, the source, and uh, we can... Uh, launch that uh, anywhere on the on, on the estate using uh, json and rest functionality which is built into drupal um, and it means that we can restyle it quite quickly as well uh, so we're focusing the effort on uh, producing one single brilliant piece of content um. So one of the recommendations CTI made to us was given the value of our assets and that we have thousands and thousands of them um, and the risks associated with asset management in terms of fines, etc., cetera, um, and reputational damage, that actually we should have our own in-house team. So we created that team. Um, we brought in digital asset management system. We wanted it to seamlessly integrate with the website so that only approved assets with the correct rights in place could be used. And that, in my experience, experience is very, very rarely done and actually seeing it in action is really a game changer for us. Um, so as Paul mentioned, if we need to withdraw an image quickly, we can do so centrally. Um, and we also wanted a much richer library um, and for it to be an easy to use, highly searchable system where both internal and external users can find what they need quickly. The keen-eyed amongst you will notice that each one of the images on the website has actually got attribution automatically, so that's a time-saving thing, really small, but it adds up to a lot of time. Um, we can now uh, fast bulk ingress assets into the dam, so it's, it's got um, all of the features you'd expect of a, a, a really feature-rich dam, so it supports the photographer's uh, workflow and makes it really efficient. Uh, it's also got approval workflows, so uh, yeah, we're checking to see whether or not they've got model permission for each one of the people that are in the, in the image and also building consent. So uh, 
uh, in the UK, if you take a photograph at a station or a public building, you have to have a written permission to, to actually use it. Um, so uh, the dam stores all of those permissions, so it's absolutely watertight. Um, we also have an API that warns the content editors that they've got uh, images that uh, are approaching rights expiry. And it's a really good thing about Drupal is that um, the dam that we um, procured um, didn't have any of these functionalities, but we worked together with the dam provider and extended Drupal um, to, provide, to meet the specific requirements that Visit Britain had. Um, and yes, yeah, so it, 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 we can remove images at, at a moment's notice. And you know, the images that you've seen throughout this slide deck and uh, the ones that are on assets.visitbritain.com uh, are an embodiment of uh, the fact that they now have this huge, um, really rich resource to draw upon to, to, um, to sell the country. <coughs> Yeah, and um, the impact for the new dam has been absolutely incredible. So it's currently used by 221 people internally, nearly 2,000 external users, and that number is growing all the time. Um, and that represents over 1,300 different organisations and across 63 countries in the world. So really, in conclusion, the programme that we launched two years ago and have delivered with CTI has been truly transformative. We have transformed our digital presence, so that means that we can attract and engage audiences as never before, and we can see that in our stats. And that has also reinforced our position of authority and leadership in the sector. We have a unified technology platform that enables reuse and has significantly reduced the duplication of effort, and I guess most importantly now, enables us to innovate at pace. And we have a consistent digital first way of working across the organisation. So we are really proud, and I think rightly so, of, of what the joint team has achieved. And the results speak for themselves. So 24% uh, increase in engagement rate, 36% increase in session duration, and over 40% increase in quality visits, which really is incredible and transformative. So yeah, thank you very much. I'd like to thank Marie for taking the time to come over to DrupalCon to speak today and I'd like to thank everyone here today for coming to listen. And does anyone have any questions? Oh, um, oh God, <laughs> do I really have to? <laughs> okay, uh, did you mention which CMS you used before? I guess you used many uh, because there was many sites. And yeah. second, uh, how many editors do you have and what has their experience been to move to Drupal? So we had multiple sites, we had um, multiple versions of Drupal, but we also had Sitecore and WordPress before. Um, and so now we have editors within the country teams. So we have six country teams and within those teams, they're marketers, they're not digital first people, but they have found it so easy to use that actually they're all using it. It's, it's, it's easy for them and the feedback we get is really positive. Yeah, part of the user research that we did was with the actual content managers. Um, so we have laid on top of Drupal some enhancements to make their lives easier. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was wondering what uh, DOM system are you using and are you replacing the entirety of the media uh, library in Drupal with the DOM or parts of it? So the um, dam system is um, provided by, is it LA? Yeah, look at me. Look at me, look at me, I always forget. Um, and that, that then is our entire dam, so all of our images are held in there and then just pulled through for, to Drupal for the website. Yeah. So they, they specialise in um, the tourism industry, they're based in Australia. Um, what we did was uh, we worked with the provider to get uh, integration to uh, the media module in Drupal so that the assets could be um, harness using all of the capabilities that Drupal has, like um, resizing of images and um, yeah, having responsive images. Um, so uh, they are drawn into uh, the, the website, but there is a, a knowledge of a linkage retained. So. so my question is, why was Magento used uh, or chosen as the uh, commerce part of the site and not using just Drupal Commerce, which so, is native? Really good question. Uh, the answer is, um, 
So Visit Britain have uh, invested in, over many years, uh, a, a large platform called TXGB, which is, uh, has all of the availability of um, theatre tickets. Um, it links to uh, the Mayor of London's systems and, and multiple others. There is an existing uh, integration to Magento with that, and it took years to develop. And we didn't want to remove all of that investment um, or to create more scope for the project. Uh, so what we did was, and, and we do develop Magento sites as an agency, so it was very much in our wheelhouse. Um, but what we wanted to do was to leverage a Drupal's fabulous uh, content management capabilities. It's way better than Magento, um, and we can really paint with the, the content in, uh, with freedom. And what we did was we, we actually integrated um, the products as a continuous migration of product into Drupal so that we can treat it as a native entity in Drupal. Um, but then we have uh, the basket is um, interacting with uh, the basket in Magento. So quite an elaborate solution, but um, yeah, it was because of this big investment in Magento already. Yeah. So Drupal Commerce is great. Sorry, um, I, I just have a question on sort of the governance side of things. Uh, we're staring down the barrel of a similar public sector uh, project. Um, and just in terms of buy-in, did you, like, how were you set up to, um, to get that project underway with, when you have multiple stakeholders, it turns into design by a committee and then a bun fight and then, like, it, the timelines blow out and all that. So I'm just interested to hear what your experience of that was. So full disclosure, I wasn't there at the beginning. I've only been here okay. for the last two months, hence, you know, having to use the, the notes. But um, what, what, I, what I do know is that they put in place a board, like a, a decision-making board, with four members of the board on it. And um, that has really helped, because that, that board is still continuing. Um, it's quite light touch now, because they've seen that the programme has really delivered, but basically all key decisions need to go through that board. It's held monthly, so there's not a, a big time lag in terms of making decisions. And in terms of that authority, are they like, they put the hammer down and everyone listens to them, or do they just fight their corner up there? Are they, do they have carte blanche authority to make those decisions? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that we did do was at the very start of the project, we engaged with a large number of stakeholders uh, to make sure that their voices were heard and we understood what their needs were. Yeah. And um, so it was a, 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 it's a top down and it's also a bottom up approach. And then the second thing is uh, in the translations, did you guys cover Welsh? Um, so we, okay. Oh, that's right. We're from an Irish university, so we're trying to figure that out. Well, that, that, that's not in, in your... Because um, it's a different government. I know, but it's a similar language. We're just seeing what, what you guys might have used for that. Yeah, uh, as an agency, we have experience with uh, delivering Welsh language websites, perhaps we could speak afterwards. <laughs> it's a, it's a I'm glad I got that right then. <laughs> I'm afraid I think we're out of time, but um, if anybody else wants to ask any more questions, Joe, go ahead, we'll be around for a while. <laughs>